So the extraordinary variety tour has driven in the early morning into the centre of sleepy Stow on the world in Gloucestershire. Rihanna's tour bus, stuffed with journalists from hunting magazines all over Europe, are sampling the products of Zeiss, Zara, and Hornady, with deer stalking organised by Diana Hunting Tours. Today I'm following David Carsten Pedersen from Denmark. Was it Stow on the Wall? How do you how do you pr- pronounce the wall? Wold. That's our top sporting agent Paul Childerley in the background doing the briefing. Today we are with one of his guys enjoying a beautiful south of England autumn morning. We're not short of deer. Here is David deep in Conflab while an animal walks down the hedge line in front of him. He takes up the story. Where all of a sudden this uh, buck appears and goes into the thick stuff. And um, we were standing there and trying to get close and trying to get a, a decent shot. We could only see the head. You can see the ears, you can see the eye, you can see the white spot on his chin. We tried to get closer and closer and closer to, to see if we could find a gap where you could see the shoulder because we're not taking headshots through the bushes and um, with lots of stuff in front. We want a good is, it, is that a Danish thing? Uh, it's definitely, um, it I, I would definitely recommend that other people uh, <laughs> apply themselves in that way as well. That, uh, Shots should be on the shoulder and it just drops the animals quick and it's clean. And the um, British generally say the same thing as you. Yeah, as a, as a general principle, I, I don't shoot through th- thick stuff. If I'm a bit scared, there'll be a branch. It's much easier not to shoot. I did have a few chances of an next shot, but still there might there were so many branches just coming in front. It's very frustrating because you're sitting there, he's watching you and you're watching him, and you're watching him, and you're watching you and back and forth and back and forth. And you can see the whole animal, but you, there's just no shot. And that's one of the situations where you really want to learn not to squeeze. We had to do something because he was not getting out of there and if we started to move around him, he would run off. So I thought, okay, let's try to see how close we can get because then the gaps between the branches are going to get bigger, bigger, bigger. So I got within five meters of him, 15 feet. And uh, I could just see his bum on one side and one ear on the other side of the tree. And I dropped my stick because I know when, when he's coming out, he's just going to come out, look at you. Um, so I was getting ready, getting up, almost leaning out, and then he decided that enough was it, enough is enough. And then he trots off, and again, there's too much brush in front. You don't, you, if there's a clear shot, you could take a, a walking shot, but um, I don't take a walking shot through the bushes. It's, it, it's hunting. It's, uh, it has to be clean, it has to be quick. Following that game of grandmother's footsteps, for the rest of the morning the Zeiss optics have to work a bit harder. No deer lets us get nearly as close. Um, afterwards we head down the hill and then in the field we see a couple of females and we have a buck out in the field and we have a munchak uh, slowly walking across the field and there's this teeming with deer. Um, again, the problem we couldn't find a, a spiker, that's what we were going for. So just slowly, slowly, slowly sneaking around, see if we can find something else. And uh, suddenly deer just appeared everywhere, coming out of the hedges, popping out. It's, um, I must say, it's a very exciting place to hunt. Uh, so much game around. It's very much like hunting at home. Uh, it feels very homely and uh, it's easy to get your eyes adjusted to it. Um, because you kind of know the shapes and you know the colours and all of a sudden there's a munchak there. Whoa. Then we come across a small herd of fat tucked under a hedge. There's four deer lying around this place. Oh, I think they're all does, I think. Yeah. Let's have a look and check it out. They're all left. They're yeah. left down. Okay. Yes, in the last part we are almost home and in my experience, I think about 50% of the bucks I shoot, I shoot going back from the place where I thought they would be. Because then you relax and all of a sudden, poof, stuff pops up. They're out there all the time. So this time we walk back just in that area where we saw the little spiker. <laughs> There's about five or six lying <laughs> like pills on a string next to the hedge. Again, the problem is background. No shot, no dice. So he's still out there. Disappointed? No, not at all. I had great fun. Um, so just getting that close and having so much time with him watching, see the chin, see his face, and um, it's great, having lots of fun.